Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Have you have you here for a while? Uh, yeah, I first went back my home at Hawaii, uh -huh. and then arrived here yesterday. I see. Yeah, I just got here this morning. They lost my luggage and uh, oh, couldn't oh. check into my hotel room, so I just hang out for since five a.m. <laughs> okay. Which, which airline did you take? Uh, China Airlines. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you would stay here for the entire workshop? Uh, till Friday. And then going to Beijing for this uh, weekend workshop before the stream. Oh, oh there's a weekend. I there's a weekend that. workshop. <laughs> Is that still in Qingwen? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to streams? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stream. Yeah. Mm. But I didn't know the uh, weekend workshop. Yeah. No, either way, it's a small workshop. It's um, mm. mostly 60s stuff, actually. 60s stuff? What? what? No, no, I, I think it's just that they happen to invite to have invited a bunch of speakers that all had worked on 60 uh, field, field. No, 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 you know, like little string theory, this sort of things. Oh, wait, 60? 60. What, what, why did those? You mean 96? No, no, 6 dimensional. Oh, 6 dimensional, I see. <laughs> I thought you were talking about 96 things. No, no, no. I got quite. Okay. <laughs> 60s are over. Mm. Anyway, uh, I see. Mm. What? Why are you here? Oh, I'm. Uh, 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 series three. Uh, actually, let me see. Uh, I am doing three. Mostly at the moment, three projects. One is the thing I'm wrapping up with. Uh, you know, uh, all those guys. Yeah. Um, on the two comma two um, bootstrap. Uh, you know, there are you know various interesting results, but uh, I have a collection of results, but nothing particularly striking or unexpected. But really, kind of there are a lot of interesting results. Um, one thing I'm uh, uh, quite excited about, uh, which I might have a little time to talk about in this workshop, uh, is the modular bootstrap. So where with uh, Scott yeah, Collier, you told me yeah. About. So um, uh, I don't know how, how how much detail he told you. Please. You told me that you found a stronger bond than Len Hellman's Correct. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, uh, see, Hellman never really pushed his program, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he showed right. that if you use um, simple functionals, uh, you know, it's basically the same semi definite programming. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you use simple functional involving first and third order derivatives in tau, mm -hmm. um, he, he got the constraint that the gap is like 0 over 6. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we know that analytically the twist gap will be c minus 1 over 12. That, that's something we know. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, uh, can you, you know, whether you know, the dimension gap has to be something below Hellerman's bound, but has to be above c over 12. But you know, what, what is it? You know, if you exhaust the power of the semi definite program, what do you get? Um, we still don't know the answer, but we have some uh, numerical results for. Uh, moderate values of C, not, not too large, mm -hmm. uh, and it suggests that asymptotically um, it's um, lower than C over 9. Mm. Uh, okay, so, so it's, it's not clear whether it's ever going to go down to C over 12, but it's below C over 9. Uh, and I can, um, in fact, I can show you a plot. Uh, So, um, this is, so we consider C greater than 1, uh -huh. and we assume uh, there are no conserved currents in theory. So that already excludes all rational CLT, so I consider irrational theories. Mm -hmm. really. um, uh, so, this red line is essentially the optimized result, mm -hmm. um, numerically. Uh, this line over here is between C equals 1 and 4. Uh, this line here has the slope 1, 6. So, this is uh, exactly C over 6 plus a third. Uh, okay. The, the, the line is the line I uh, uh, sorry, from. it's the red line. Red line. Ignore the blue. So this orange is a twist gap. Okay. okay. Um, the blue is C over eight plus yeah. something. Uh, actually, there's a type of this would be one one half. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you ignore that the blue line is just for, for contrast. Uh, this the red line is actual bound. Mm -hmm. So uh, when C equals one, this is one half. Then right to the one, it's a kink here, and it turns around and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it goes like this. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is C over eight, which is already significantly stronger than Hellerman's bound. 
um, or our friend Fernand Keller. Um, okay. Uh, now, uh, we're still not sure as to what it is, but we, what we do know is that the slope, so let me show you the, the in fact, so even, uh, so first I should say that, you know, you can take the functional to be taking derivative in tau and tau bar, uh, right? Um, uh, previously, both Hellerman, Friedman, and Keller only took derivative in tau 2 along the imaginary tau axis. So that has not exhausted the, the, all the functionals. Mm -hmm. Uh, it turns out that what, what seems to be the case is that um, for small values of C, uh, if you take time tau bar derivative, you get a strictly stronger bound than just taking tau 2 derivative along the imaginary tau axis. Um, but uh, when C is large, numerically they become, they become very close and essentially indistinguishable. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, so you don't gain, you don't seem to gain anything uh, it, as far as the bound on uh, all spin, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the gap of all spin parameters uh, is concerned. Um, but um, uh, it turns out that Friedman and Keller did not push their you know, numerics uh, hard enough. They did not push it that far enough mm -hmm. because um, they only worked to a given derivative order and they look at very large central charge. The problem is that in order to optimize the bound, the bigger you take the central charge to be, the higher derivative you have to go to. Mm -hmm. So numerically, this becomes very difficult. Um, so uh, in fact, so they only went to like 20 derivative order. We have to go to 200 years of order just to produce uh, something that's reasonable up to a C equals 100 or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, now uh, let me show you the plot of the, so, so you know, the gap is a function of C. So you can ask what is the slope? So the slope you know, starts at like 1 eighth and drops down to 1 9. You know, does it ever go down to 1 12? So, so we did a numerical fit of the slope um, uh, up to C equals say 90 or 100 or so. Uh -huh. it, it keeps decreasing uh -huh. uh, and it drops to slightly below 1 9. So uh, whether it's going to go down to 112 or not, I don't know. Okay. Well, numerically, we're just not able to push this much further. Um, it, it, it's very funny because this, you know, crossing equation is so simple, right? Because you can factor out the eta function, the your sort of character is an elementary function. Uh, you would think that you must be able to prove this analytically. We tried very hard, but we're not able to prove it ana analytically. Uh, so I have a question. So from the graphy side, there is a reason why um, c over 12. Uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the CC over 12 is special. So the reason is that the, the PTZ black hole will only dominate um, you, you, when uh, the mass is larger than C over 12. I really don't want to use the graph here. Uh, it's true, there's, there's um, some, you, uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the, uh, one of the basic points I would like to make uh, is that um, there's a huge gap mm -hmm. between uh, the CFT we would like to have to talk about ABS CFT, mm -hmm. ABS3 CFT2, and the CFT we actually know about. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you the following question. Uh, what are, if I ask you to give me a CFT with a C greater than one and no conserved current, do you think that any theory that deals with gravity theory with no masses fields will be of having such property gen generically, right? There'll be no conserved currents and there'll be no conserved, uh, uh, no, no conserved currents unitary, C greater than one. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give me an example of such a theory that you, you, you can actually construct and you know that for sure exists as a CFT too? You, that's unitary. Non rational CFT. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, when, when I say no conserved currents, that already excludes all rational theories. So can you give me an example of such a theory? Um, uh, yeah. So I can give you a class of examples, uh, which is that I take a supersymmetric Calabi-Alb model mm -hmm. and I gauge it with the one current. A generic one in modern space, that's expected to have such a property, right? But these are the only example I know. I don't know any other way to construct such theories. I, I would love to lo know any other theory that obey this property. I don't know any other construction. No, that sounds, sounds very surprising. For example, these Calabria models all have marginal deformations. You know, yeah. that, that's very yeah. different. So there are some close side theories that are no conserved current, but they are still rational. No, no, no. No, no. But almost, I think you know this very well. Almost by definition, every rational theory admits tons of conserved currents because there's a non trivial vacuum character that's ex non trivially extensive parasoric character. That means that they conserve currents. There's an extended current algebra. But so the, 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 um, there can be some extended symmetry that will not give you current, but just some discrete symmetry. Uh, so I don't think so. so it, it, no, it, no. It, it uh, just like the U one uh, theory, you 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 will have spin one current, but but there are still discrete symmetry. Lab. No, we have spin one current already. Not no, no, no. But I, what my my point was that um, every rational CFT will have 
uh, a set of I mean, characters. That, that's true. Uh, you know, his partition function would be the sum of character squares. The, the, the vacuum character would be more than just the Versoro vacuum character. Because the Versoro vacuum character does not sit in a finite dimensional modular representation. We would, yeah. Therefore, the rational CFT always have extra conserved currents, almost by definition. There is no such thing as rational CFT greater yeah. than one with no conserved currents. That doesn't exist. No, it, can, it can be like a fractional current, but after you, you do something. No, fractional. no, no, you cannot. No. I just, I just gave you arguments. I, I, I just gave you arguments. My argument is very simple. For a rational CFT, mm -hmm. You use a rational CFT, the, the holomorphic characters have to form a finite dimensional representation of the modular group. If there are no conserved currents, one of these characters would have to be the Versoro vacuum character. But the Versoro vacuum character does not sit in a finite dimensional representation of the modular group. Therefore, it's impossible for rational CFT to not emit conserved currents. We follow from representation theory. There will always be higher speed conserved currents. Just think about the partition function. What does the partition function look like? Yeah, I, I, I know your argument, but I need to try to think about it. So, This seems to be a pretty robust argument. This it's very straightforward. There's really, I don't see any loophole in this argument. Okay, so your argument is that if there is no any conserved current. Uh, the argument is the following. Uh, a rational CFT has the property that the partition function is um, the sum of, let's uh, uh, say, the square. I mean, you, know, you can consider it non diagonal modular, but let me first yeah, yeah, consider okay. a diagonal case. Okay? Um, sum of square of uh, holomorphic characters. Yes. Yeah. Well, whether it's diagonal or not, that does not really affect yeah, this argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and um, one of these characters include the vacuum. Yeah. So let's call that the vacuum character. But that's the vacuum character with respect to some larger symmetry. If it's a larger symmetry, already it proves my statement. That's, that's if, right. if it larger means that there are additional states that contribute to this character uh, that uh, are conserved currents, oh, you're, you're done. Mm -hmm. If there are no extra states, then it means that the Verasoro vacuum character has to see the finite dimensional representation of SL2C and the modular transformation. That's not possible. We know how it transforms on that surface. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. You know, in fact, uh, Tom Harmon and uh, uh, Eric Perlmutter uh, wanted to make a conjecture. They want to conjecture that um, all CFTs with conserved currents are actually rational, uh, but this conjecture was ruled out by Simi and Hellerman. Uh, there is a counterexample. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can take some irrational theory and take its uh, uh, symmetric product over well, well, So for, wh Why is the conjecture true? But if you just consider compact boson and he has a spin one current, but not uh, all the compact uh, bosons. Uh, I think, him, uh, sorry, uh, maybe excluding spin one. Let's say exclude, yeah. exclude spin one, spin, okay. the higher spin. Yeah. But, but anyway. No, no, I think the conjecture is not less false. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, um, so coming back to my point, uh, it seems to be a very reasonable thing to demand a generic CFD, you know, unitary compact, C greater than one, and have no conserved currents. Uh, you would think that such theories are ubiquitous. There should be, you know, any, 
generic theory of gravity, we do with a theory like this. But examples are very limited, and they all have marginal definitions. And that's very strange. So either there are some constraints we don't, we're completely missing, or we just don't know most of these CFTs. We don't know how to construct them. And anyway, you know that, that's that's my main motivation. So so the, the so I'm trying to constrain you know in such theories as to as much as I can. Um, I mean there, there are these bounds, uh, but but um, you know uh, I, I don't exactly know uh, at the moment what they're good for, but you know they are, they are, they are true statements. Right? They just follow from they're interesting and very non-trivial, you know, even numerically they're hard to obtain. Um, but then there's some. Uh, there are much more detailed questions you can ask, and there are many other interesting kind of bounds. For example, uh, if you can take the top and top bar directly separately, then you can distinguish special uh, parameters of different spins. So you can, for example, you can ask, um, what if you try to bound the gap of only the scalar primaries without putting assumption on any non-zero spin primaries? So non-zero spin primaries, they can have gap as small as you want. You just want to bound the gap of scalar primaries. What bound do you get? Okay, so let me show you a plot of that. It's very interesting. Down here was the previous plot I showed you, previous bound for all. This red one, the weaker bound, is a bound on just the scalars uh, without any assumption on that zero spin. So, so it's interesting. So, so it has the, it's, you know, it's weaker and it's, you know, some non trivial profile. Okay? Oh, uh, there's a minimal dimension of the scalar part. Th that's right. That's right. So, so it's, it's weak, strictly weaker. Uh, but then there's something curious. It appears to, this bound appears to disappear as C equals 25. So it diverges as equal to the five. Numerically, that's pretty hard to extract. So we did some, like Scott did some hard work to understand how this thing diverges as equal to the five. So we had to go to high degree order to, to, to see that it, it kind of gets pushed to zero, zero to the five. So, so it kind of diverges in this way. Uh, we don't understand why. Um, it says that um, uh, starting at C equals to the five, it is possible to write down a consistent unitary partial function with no scalar primaries at all. Very weird. I'm not sure what that means, but you know, it's just comes up. Well, I, I tried to I was to construct an example. I couldn't come up with any examples. Mm. Yeah, there, there are other very uh, interesting things you can do. Um, It's really below uh, C over 12, and then what's the interpretation? Sorry, I'm going to grab this up. The bound is what? It really below C over 12. No, no, no. It can never be below C over 12. Oh, sorry, sorry. Below C over 6. Below C over 6. Oh, and C then, then what's, six. The, what's the in interpretation? No, but that's perfectly consistent. What do you mean? I mean, in, from yeah, the gravity side. That's consistent. Um, mm -hmm. from, yeah, I mean, from gravity side. No, from gravity this, side, the busy black hole would only tell you, naively, would only tell you uh, that it's bigger than C over 12. Yeah, but. But uh, the BTC black hole of, uh, of, of, of dimension smaller than C over 6 will not dominate uh, the dynamics. Will not dominate the dynamics. But we're not talking about the dominance yeah, 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 right? We're true, just talking yeah. about the existence. That, so true, so we're true. not, for example, uh, even 
So uh, you can put bound on a degeneracy, which we're also studying. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, th this bound I'm describing now is not making an assumption on the de degeneracy. In, in fact, um, yeah, it is, you know, it's just not putting any assumptions. Is it possible that you also consider degeneracy and maybe you can no, I, I should say, I should make a few comments. Uh, the bound I'm talking about here can be slightly refined, but only very, very slightly, mm -hmm. uh, uh, based on two, two facts. Uh, first of all, we only assume that degeneracies are positive, but we haven't assumed that they're integers. So, if you assume that they're integers, you would imagine that the bound can be slightly refined, but not by very much, because these degeneracies grow very quickly, they grow exponentially fast in C. So when there are some large number, whether it's integer or not, is not very important. But when the C is very close to one, it, it makes a difference. Now, that's point one. Point two is that um, uh, while I started by assuming that no conserved currents, which tells me that I can take the partition function and expand in the non-degenerate variceral characters for the non-vacuum primaries, uh, have positive coefficients, it is possible to ha actually have a theory with conserved currents that has the same property because um, you know, if a theory has conserved currents, a priori, if you expand it in the non-degenerate characters, you might get negative coefficients, but it can happen that they get canceled by some positive coefficients of some uh, other primaries of integer twist. Mm -hmm. So this can happen, for example, for the sequence one um, compact boson and self-view radius. Uh, that theory has conserved currents, but nonetheless, you can check if you decompose the character in this way, you will, uh, you will find that uh, the co coefficients are still not negative, which is actually why the bound at sequence one is um, uh, it, it is one half, not zero. Because uh, you would have said that C equals one zero should be completely ruled out, but here it says the balance is one half. But that actually, that's one half is saturated by the compact boson. It's because the theory, even though it has conserved currents, it pretends that it's a theory, you know, uh, you know uh, not ruling it out explicitly. So uh, you could rule that out uh, by introducing a small twist gap for the, say, C1 primaries. Then it turns out that the bound drops. But you know, there's this subtlety that that's potentially there. Um, uh, anyway, there are many uh, other interesting statements you can make. Um, for example, if you assume, okay, so uh, so here we have a upper bound on the gap, mm -hmm. uh, which is above the c over twelve, c minus one over twelve. If you assume the gap is somewhere between C minus 1 over 12 and this upper bound, mm -hmm. uh, then if you assume that there's a gap that's in between, you could saturate the, the bound or may not saturate the bound, um, you can put the upper bound on the degeneracy at the gap. If it's below C minus 1 over 12, you cannot put the upper bound, you can never you can have as many upper there as you want, but if it's between C minus 1 over 12 and the upper bound mm -hmm. of the dimension, then you can put the upper bound on the degeneracy. If that upper bound on the degeneracy is saturated, mm -hmm. let me call this partition function the extremal partition function. Okay. It turns out that for the extremal partition function, the spectrum is completely fixed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. it's completely fixed by some indefinite programming. So when the so given the gap, if you saturate the upper bound, actually there's an optimal linear functional that's uniquely fixed. So you know that the uh, uh, Let me show you a plot. <laughs> it's better to show you a numerical plot, and you'll be if you see this plot, you'll be convinced that it works. Um, let me see if I can find it. <coughs> mm. ah, there. So, uh, this is the kind of plot, this is the logarithmic plot you get by acting uh, the optimal linear functional uh, when the upper bound on your theorem is saturated. Um, uh, you, you act that on the crossing equation for a particular character of a given weight. Um, and the zeros, which correspond to minus infinity of the logs, which are these dips here, these are the spectrum. The, the, these are, this is for the case of sequels, uh, actually, this is for sequels five, and then there are some other examples, various values in a charge. So um, the point is that you actually merge to pin down the spectrum by, by looking at the zeros. But you do not keep track of the spin. No, no, we're just keeping track of the spin. So this is spin zero, this spin nice. one, and so forth. <coughs> uh, that, that's, that's not really it. I think it's, this is the, the real zero. Um. Oh, so it's 
so for speed one is not the dimension is always zero or not zero? No, no, no. For speed one, of course, the dimension has to be one and higher. That, that, that's yeah. not really. Oh, okay. that, that's not that's not a zero. That this is zero. Um, no, so no, wait, but speed one, dimension one, then that's the concept. It's not one. It's bigger than one. Oh, okay. It's bigger than one. Um, but in, in some case it becomes one. For example, if you in the C equals one case, it should become one. That's what it's like. So this C equals one case is sorry. This is C equals one point zero five. It's very close to one now. Okay. It's very close. To one. Yeah. So, so this, this kind of came as a surprise. But I mean, it's uh, it, these days in the, in the I guess it's somewhat expected from the I mean this kind of phenomenon was what, seen in higher dimensional post trap. I'm not sure exactly what it's good for, though, because uh, you know, generally this kind of extremal friendly function, I'm not sure why you would want to demand um, the, the bound of the degeneracy to be saturated at a gap. There's no good reason for this a priori, right? but, but you know, just pure as an academic exercise, if you do assume the saturated. But if the bound exists, and then, then, then you, you assume the, the degeneracy is saturated bound, and then you can fit in down the spectrum. That, that's you basically it. get a modular invariant partition function. It says there's a and unique modular invariant partition yeah. function uh, that maximizes the degeneracy at the gap. And then you, you want to conjecture that this, this theory exists? No, 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 I'm not conjecturing that theory exists. You see, the degeneracy, um, the, it seems like the, the degeneracy theory. is not even an integer. It may not be an integer. Uh, I but don't but know that degeneracies are integers. But I mean, but if you consider very large central charge, and then then the degeneracy might be very large, and it's yeah, not, yeah, not that yeah. not that. Oh, I, I mean, that, you know, I mean, you, is the integer or non-integer is not not. Uh, you that is true. It is very likely that there exists some theory that's very close to this, whose partial function is very close to close to this. That, that's very likely the case. I don't have any tool to address that question, obviously. I think to address this will, question, will, 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 will maximum degeneracy um, be able to see something like that if you take large C limit and maximum? Uh, I think it's exponential. Um, yeah, but uh, I think to address this kind of question, ultimately we need to do the genus 2 post uh, I think we, uh, uh, yeah, we can't really go much further than this. So if, 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 if I consider just for more CFT, and then, then consider a large C limit of, of the, the, this extreme mode series, and then I think people show that if you consider, um, if you consider degeneracy that uh, at, at the gap, yeah. then the degeneracy is finite, I think. You get some finite degeneracy. Not, 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 not scale with C or exponentially in C. Uh, sure, but so that, that's that's like metric. That that just yeah. I think mm -hmm. No, no, but, but that's just well. No, I think first of all that's a completely different problem. Yeah. And second of all, that the answer to that is completely elementary. It's a follow from uh, polynomials of Eisenstein series. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah, that's right. It's quite different from. And that's very different. Yeah. That, that's completely different. Yeah. You I, 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 I don't, I don't not, think they're. Not find a finite degeneracy. No. What do you mean? I do find a finite degeneracy. Wait. No, so that is what I'm saying. So, wait, I, I, I think you actually that if I, if I was, if I was actually about the degeneracy, I mean, in a large scale. Oh, in large scale, yeah. No, 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 that would not be bounded. That would not, yeah, but, but that then, would not be bounded. The, 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 the thing I said is that in a large scale limit, if you consider homomorphic, CFT, so oh, wait, if you're saturated about, I think the degeneracy is. I don't think so. I don't think so. Is this I don't think no no. How can it be order one? You know the you know very well for the monster series series is already one nine six eight eight three. Well, how is it order one? You know for the k equals two extreme well finite function is some huge number. It's like you know, tens of minutes. It's not true. No, that's not true. It's, it's going to be a whole idea to the scene. No, you can just look at the, the table in, in, you know, I yeah. think if even with the Wittem's paper, he wrote about these numbers, right? In fact, in Wittem's paper, he showed explicitly that, uh, I mean, there's this numerology he compared with the BTC uh, black line cardio formula to show that it agrees with the expression from the naive cardio formula. It's exponential. It may not be e to a C, it might be e to a square root C. Maybe that's correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's e to a square root C. Here, I think it's not even e to a square root C, I think it's e to a C. 
Uh, I, I haven't checked this carefully, but, but I would expect them to do this. There's one other thing I'm doing with uh, two new students, uh, Bruno and Victor. Um, uh, I, you know, I'm revisiting this problem of uh, computing the S matrix or supersymmetric matrix one mechanics. Um, uh, there's some numerical progress, so we're trying, we're trying to use the Hamiltonian truncation method to solve this problem. So it sounds very stupid. So wait, by the way, back to the C two. Have you? So back to the C D D goes through. Yes. So have you ever tried the so, so there's another way of doing bootstrap is consider the, the, the you you you, start, you 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 increase the number of characters, these few character bootstrap. And uh, that, you know, I, uh, that um, yeah, that it's not always to me that's a consistent thing to do. Uh, it's possible you always get two strong constraints. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is that for, given C where that one, strictly speaking, you only have finally many characters, there'll be no solution to your trap equation. Right. So I, I know that in the bootstrap community, there are a few people who are doing this kind of bootstrap in higher dimensions by truncating the final number of primaries. I don't understand the logic of these people. I mean, I don't understand why it should work, in principle. I mean, they seem to have some encouraging numerical evidence that seems to work. I don't, I don't understand why they work. I don't think they understand either. I mean, there was some talk about this at this uh, Florence workshop. Mm. What, 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 what are the <laughs> they claim in some models they get answers that seem to be correct. Uh, I agree with some results from other methods. I don't understand why. Uh, partially, the, the, you know, the reason they want to do this is because they want to study non-unitary theories, which this method will be useful. Um, but I, I don't understand why it's, it's, it's non-unitary, so you don't have the, the exactly, the exactly. To the bootstrap uh, would be to do genus two. I, I think we gotta try to figure out how to compute genus two blocks. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Um, and, you know, what I'd like to do is to, um, <coughs> you know, uh, I think it's clear what to shoot for. Mm -hmm. uh, what, you, what you want to do. I mean, there, there are two channels. One is this dumbbell shape. Yeah. Uh, the other one is this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Theta, yeah. theta shape. Okay. So, uh, in either case, you want to think of three cylinders, like actual cylinders, and glued along the boundary. Mm -hmm. right? So, um, I mean, there's some conformal anomaly, but mm -hmm. you know, I think this is a good representation. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is similar to the pillow geometry for the sphere four point function. Mm -hmm. So, in this representation, you expect that uh, the conformal block has some nice form, uh, and then some some coefficients you want to you want to fix. Maybe there's some recursion relation. Um, but, I mean, 
uh, you know, you would think that there should be some recursion relation, but the hard part is, you know, how do you fix these coefficients of these residues? Coefficient of the pulse. Um, small, small room. Okay. So, but in the genus 2 point on those, you all the condensed information of the structure constant. Yes, yes. Well, you see, if you can do genus 2, well, that would automatically include, combine, all the results we know from one triple trap yeah. and, and, and sphere full point, because so far in sphere full point, we always assume pairs of operators are that enemy, and that's included in genus 2. Yeah. Now, um, but it reminds you something more. Because, yeah. you see, uh, in sphere full point, it's very hard to, well, uh, you know, in principle, you know, uh, each time you have, uh, if you want to include a lot of operators on the external uh, in the insertion, um, you get you have a huge number of crossing equations. It becomes impossible to manage. Um, but just two will have which will allow you to have some clever way to sum up their contributions, to think out their contributions without the need to separate to write separate equations for each one of these. Because for example, if some charge is moderate value, five or ten, uh, there's gonna be some huge degeneracy very quickly. So if you only solve the cross equation, that's impossible. Completely numerically completely impossible. <laughs> but you shouldn't have to because you know the you don't really have to distinguish all these operators at some excited level. You just want to know sure, their total contribution. And so the genus of function is the way to take that into account in an efficient way. Yeah, but by the way, so um, for genus one, so you, you can confirm the little bit genus by doing a twist and that will be protected. So no, do it's you almost, know, it's yeah, there. Yeah. do you know that can I construct something that's protected from genus two for the function? Do some kind of twist. Uh, I think what you're asking is, uh, are there pathetic higher ring coefficients? Mm -hmm. That, of course, depends on the number of super symmetries. And uh, um, the answer is sometimes yes. For example, let's consider 2 comma 2 theory. Mm -hmm. So in the 2 comma 2 theory, you can have some higher ring coefficients that, that, that you know is protected. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so let's work backwards. How do you extract those higher ring coefficients? Um, well, uh, <coughs> you're the first speaker. Yeah. Uh, well, this is really theory dependent because, for example, for Columbia models of mm -hmm. odd uh, uh, complex dimensions, um, there are known and trivial quarter BPS operators. Right? So, you know, the heterogeneous for Columbia model with odd complex dimension uh, is something very trivial. It tells you basically that. Um, all the quarter BPS operators are actually descendants of the marginal half BPS operators. That's not the case for K3, mm -hmm. but it's the case for Claudio Triple. Mm -hmm. So, well, I don't think we need to do that specific theory. So, no, no, no. no. no, 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 no I'm, I'm trying to work backwards and see what you yeah. expect. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to, 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 to get what you expect. Right? Mm -hmm. So, let's take Claudio Three model mm -hmm. and ask what, what, what happens. Can you define some interesting? Genus two index. Okay. Um, I think the answer is uh, probably no. Well, let, let's see. So you want to have something that captures the covering coefficient, right? So, so, um, uh, so uh, you have three cylinders. You want to say on each cylinder you only keep uh, things that are BPS on the left and not BPS yeah. on the other yeah. side. Um, well, I suppose you can do that. I, I suppose that the, 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 that sounds fine actually. Uh, so it sounds like there is going to be something that captures the, it's basically like the Yukawa complete squared, uh, summed over.
first of all, you have to define more carefully what you mean by protected. And uh, if I think the more appropriate question to ask is, is there a linear functional whose which acts on formal mode and give you something that is protected? So, the, okay. so you well, sometimes you know that there are some kind of operations that are protected. Mm -hmm. They are a part of the four point function. Mm -hmm. There are some linear functional that acts on four point function and extracts the Kyrie coefficient squared. Mm -hmm. That thing, you know, it's protected. So the, there are certainly some information that's protected. The rest is up to you. You know, the, the rest depends on how you want to extract that okay. information. The, this is exactly how we're bootstrapping the token function to the two comma two bootstrap. We feed in the Kyrie coefficient, then we try to constrain the rest. And, and you have to define more carefully what we mean by protected. For example, you can define protected to be uh, invariant okay. along the modular so space, but that's not even true for the current I think so, yeah. so I think um, I would like to. So, okay. So, 4.0 was pretty dangerous for the mobile and the mobile form. Uh, by the, the way, sorry, before we continue, of course, you, as you know pretty well, there are definitely functions that are actually protected in the sense that you can, they're just determined completely. Um, these are the ones that control um, the derivative for your cover company. Uh, but I guess, really speaking, they are not actually. Uh, oh, I guess they're not actually. They're individual anyway motion. They're not actually the non local form motion. Yeah. So that, that's different. Um, uh, but nonetheless, you know, these current coefficients, they, they are protected in the sense that they, they are known. Uh, they can be computed exactly, but they're not the invariant. Um, so, which I think, okay. Well, what, 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 <laughs> so the, the open function will be a sum of this homomorphic times any homomorphic homomorphic and and, and, and and this homomorphic depends on some some coefficients the 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 close ratio and the, so in the open function case there is only close ratio and so but. But, but in genus two case, it depends on more more close ratio. Yes. And so I, I want so um, I think that you can so I want to tune this close ratio such that um, so, so 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 there so they are, they are, I, I think there will be basically two class of common blocks. One would be the BPS block, and the other is down BPS. I want to tune the close ratio such that down BPS. Or open issues and uh, that, that is too crude. Why do you want to tune the cross as opposed to just acting on the linear functional? Acting on the linear functional is that the thing you're supposed to be doing. That's mm -hmm. the most, most general thing you can do. So I, would, I was just thinking about the, the case of genus 1. In that case, you basically said... No, but even in genus 1, you still want to act with linear functional. In fact, there's something I can tell you. In, in genus 1, you just said the, the how it goes. So no, it is not, not how you just said the capacity equals to minus one. But there are many other things you can do, that's true. Yeah. And just now, I, this, this is the thing I, I think that it might be my work. Well, what, for, for 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 what I still don't understand what you're shooting for. So, for genus 2, I will have some characters that I want to. I think that this way of thinking is unnecessary mm -hmm. um, because you can simply declare that you want to pick out certain contribution from the component block decomposition. I, I mean, exactly how you can have to pick it out when you act on something like linear function, that, that is entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. You know, you can, you know, yeah. picking a special value of capacity is just a special case of linear function. Mm -hmm. So you should think in terms of this more general approach, which is to act on with an arbitrary linear function. By the way, I did tell you something interesting about the optimal linear function. Mm -hmm. So if you follow the Friedan Keller approach and consider, as a simple example, you consider the uh, modular bootstrap but with only derivative in the tau 2 direction, you can ask, um, as you include more and more derivatives, we have some result that stabilize, some bound that gets eventually gets optimized. Um, you can ask, uh, what does the optimal linear functional look like in the limit when you include infinitely many derivatives. So the linear functional is a polynomial by construction in partial tau 2, let's say, evaluated at tau equals 1. Uh, so you replace a partial tau 2 by a special parameter called t. So you have some polynomial of t. 
in the limit, we take a polynomial of degree to infinity, you have some function of t. What does this function look like? Uh, we have a plot of this function. It is some definite function. Okay? It's a non-trivial function. Uh, it's it's an, an actual non-trivial function. Uh, it actually suggests that, um, I mean, it has some, some particular shape. Roughly speaking, it looks like t times e to the minus cosine times t squared. Uh, Sorry, I should be fine more careful about what t is. It's not derivative in tau 2, but derivative goes back to the log of tau 2. But, but never mind that detail. Um, um, well, you know the analytic form of that function? No. We have the numerics, and we have an analytic fit. Uh -huh. Analytic fit works in some limits, is in some range of parameters, but it's not exact. But at least it gives you some idea of what this might be. Um, but it's interesting. Um, it's interesting particularly in that it points toward the, the idea that um, polynomials with derivative is actually a poor choice of basis, especially if you want to do the construct for large C. Uh, what you should be doing is some kind of integral transform. Numerically, we haven't been able to implement this because it's very hard. But it points toward the idea of multiple point bootstrap, which is that you're not supposed to only take derivative at factor of i. You should be looking at you know, simple points like along the, the tau plane. Um, and, and there's some very non-trivial combination, some kind of integral transform of the crossing equation on the character that's supposed to give you the optimal linear function. Is there no way form of this optimal linear function you can then prove You should be able to prove about it analytically. Unfortunately, our naive guess did not work. Um, our naive guess um, approximates the profile of the linear function in some range of the special parameter, but it deviates from a large special parameter, but somehow that was important. Um, because um, you know, if you have this, if you only have functions of the it has to have the basic property that when you take it, act on the modular cross equation for the vacuum character, it has to have the same sign as um, you take this acting on the cross equation for characters of very high, very high dimension, arbitrary high dimension. Uh, this naive case that does not have that proper property. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so it does not work, uh, but it almost worked. It was. Um, so you said you you fit this this function that you guess with the numerical mm -hmm. setup, and, and you see that the the, the fit is like a perfect fit, and uh, the, well, no, 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 no. Uh, the the fit looks good for a finite range of the special parameter, but oh, the, okay, I see. you see, in this business, numerical precision is absolutely critical. For this, we need like a thousand digits of numerical precision. Because you know we're working with numbers like e to the minus two pi c uh, all over the places, so you have to keep like hundreds of digits to to, to, to guarantee the, you know that the numerical numerics actually make sense. Um, so a small deviation sometimes can be you know, important. You are back to physics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
think about something related to the PP trade trial in, in, in one lower dimension. The, the ADS 3 CFT2 version. And so this is yeah, where the SU times SU mod SU cosine? Uh, slightly, the angle 2 version of that. Okay. Um, so basically, the, the, the cosine is called um, the Zama Suzuki mod. Yes. And he was studying this, what, the, 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 the angle 2 version of yes. well, what, what do you gain by working with so, Um Because I know a brain construction, he gave us Suzuki mod. Let's see, so do you know the string theory, theory dual? So it's a M, M5 ring construction. No, no, but the, the decoupling limit. You say there's an M theory background? Yeah, there's an M theory background TV. It? So it's it's from a paper by uh, Hori Park and uh, Hori Park and Ashikawa. Uh, what does it, does it look like? It's, it's a, so you can see the M5 brand. No, no, but, but can you just describe the shuttle geometry? It is three times one. Well, I, I don't know that yet. I just. Oh, okay, that's not known yet. Yeah, I don't know that yet. But I try to. I try to. Yes, so I, I, I try to. I try to get that. But is it in the supervising regime? Um, so, first, um, if you naively take. Um, the, the Hori and Park and Tashikawa's construction, and then because the duo is a high speed theory, the next pattern there is a right, nice right. So you have to deform away from yes, the yes, yes, that. Was but but so I, I know, right? I know, I know, a, I think I, I, when I know a deformation that I can do it. So, so actually, um, the Zama Suzuki model, the, the high speed duo only, only, uh, it, it's only part of the Kazama Suzuki model. There is another integer deformation. And uh, so, so, so the other yeah, okay. model actually depends on three integers. And and for the highest spin deal, you fix one integer to one. Yeah. And then I want to turn on the other integer. And I want to say that if you turn on that integer, then, then the will becomes a graph here instead of highest spin. And on the on the uh, hold on, hold on a second. It's still rational, right? Yeah, it's still rational. That red light might be. I can take I can take dogs to me. Okay, if I have a gap. You were telling me that you were telling me that in particular you're telling me that in this limit the higher spin I mean, surely because it's rational, there are going to be high speed currents where you say they yeah. all, all have a huge gap in the speed. I don't check this detail like that. that. But I'm suspicious because I would think that, you know, we're speed 4, speed 6, mm. there's got to be some yeah. like invariant. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Usually you can you know, always write down these kind of things. Yeah. 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 With no, uh, you can just the construction of the yeah. So I'm, I'm skeptical that, that this will really have a large gap in the speed. Yeah, I also worry about this too. But um, so, but but okay. In, in the Kazama Suzuki model, there's a level rank duality, and I think I can map this level rank duality to, to a to a brand crossing in the and and five brands. But I mean, independently of that, I mean, then if I take a near horizon limit of five brands, how much I think I can. So the so question is that yeah, when yeah, I can get the yeah, idea it, it, it sounds like to me, uh, if, if there are, uh, you know, conserved currents of uh, spin of, uh, that doesn't grow with your parameter, then you have a problem. <laughs> I think that that never will just like any J 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, this uh, workshop uh, about string theory and quantum theory. Uh, if you are, if it's your first time to come to NCTS, uh, uh, this floor and upper floor is the NCTS uh, uh, physics uh, division. So uh, please feel free to look around to do that. Uh, just before the talk, uh, there's an announcement about the banquet on Wednesday. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet outside, so please uh, see the secretary if you want to go to sign up. Uh, our first speaker today is uh, Kim Yong from KS. He will tell us about high dimensional PFP. Uh, about uh, PFP. Yeah, that's welcome. Thank you. So, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, this topic. I talked about this already here to phenomenologists where I I looked at the content and uh, this time the string theorist, I added the more materials so that there are a few more details. So I enlisted uh, all the collaborators with whom uh, I opened this uh, subject for the last uh, five years. So let me start with uh, four-dimensional quantum field theories, which, of which we know very well. Four-dimensional quantum field theory is theory of elementary particles and we use that for theory of uh, uh, st standard model is uh, written in terms of quantum field theory. Now, if you look at uh, quantum field theory in four dimensions, there are three kinds of things. If you look at ultraviolet medium, uh, like QED, for example, has uh, IR3 and uh, UV strongly coupling with some sort of lambda pole. So theory is not well defined beyond this uh, uh, energy value. So QED is like uh, effective theory, which is true in low energy, but incomplete in ultraviolet. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at QCD like theory, then coupling constant is strong in IR, but very big in UV region. And so it's well defined uh, and the ultraviolet complete. Now, one can imagine different kinds of theories, which appears quite often in uh, supersymmetric field theory content, where coupling doesn't go to zero or doesn't blow up, goes to some constant value, and then uh, is still interacting, and it's sort of some sort of component field theory. And uh, this kind of theory one can have, so roughly one can divide the uh, four-dimensional theory into three classes, depending on their UV units. Now, let's think about how you do the quantum field theories. Uh, for example, uh, 
And also, uh, one can find that this among any type A and D type can be again obtained by studying the NM5 rings or NM5 rings or OM5 rings. Then if you look at the decoupled, the limit of the is decoupled, then one, one gets the same homogeneity. Now, one gets circular strings. This uh, quantum field theory, but it has a string in there, tangential string in the symmetric phase, and the, the circular string is paid to M to bring connecting M5 rings. Now, if you look at uh, Abelian case, then this Abelian case arises from single M5 ring physics. Now, low energy physics of M5 ring is described by uh, Abelian tensor multiply. Similarly, the tensor multiply is made of the uh, two form tensor field and five scalar field and the spin field, kind of spin field. Now, this two form tensor field in six dimension can have a self dual uh, field strength because it's, six, uh, it's possible in two and six dimensions and ten dimensions, I guess. Uh, <coughs> So because of this self-duality, the degrees of freedom is reduced from 6 to 3. So as they are massless particles, you go to uh, uh, little groups, and then if you look at the little group of, for given momentum and the energy, then it's SO4. And the tensor belongs to 3 narrow, for example, chiral of SO4. So you belong to 3 dimensional representation of SO2 and similar. And scalar field is similar, 5 of them. Formula is again the double end here and the single end. So that you have eight bosonic degrees of freedom and eight formula degrees of freedom. Now, you can have M2 brain and the one of a single end five brain as a sum to the reason uh, line operators or surface operators. And uh, in that case, uh, if you have type particle, point particle, then it's coupled to a gate field, one form field. But here, M2 brain is acting as string and the string is coupled to a two-form tensor field and the uh, generalization of the equation is like this. And because field strength is self-dual, which means that this uh, uh, M2-brain on m 5 brain carries both same electric and magnetic charge. So uh, it is a self-dual string in that context. Now, one can think about non-abelian case. Then there is no non-abelian uh, Lagrangian description for non-abelian case. The reason is that it's very hard to write down non-abelian tensor field. Uh, people have been trying to write, but somehow it's very difficult. Uh, because if you are successful in writing down the Lagrangian theory for non-abelian uh, two commercial theory, then by circle compactification, torus compactification, you get a four-dimensional local field theory for both uh, electric and magnetically charged object. And in four dimensions, if you have a non theory for point particles, uh, electric and magnetic charge, we know it's very hard to write down local field theory. And so that's a uh, uh, top task. And another one is that from the various study of the, this theory, A and T and type of theories has n to the cubic degrees of freedom, which is uh, much bigger than, say, or the representation of KD group, so it has a lot more degrees of freedom. And the two aspects of this series are a uh, great challenge for uh, to come to confirm field series. But so this series is hard to write down, but still one wants to calculate something, something concrete. So, so one way of doing it is circle compact by series on 5D, and then uh, with radius r, then uh, if I wrap the uh, M5 brain on a circle, then in uh, small radius limit, it becomes D4 brain. So if we exclude all the KK mode, then uh, on D4 brain, we have a 5D uh, equal to super young series. And uh, in this case, one of the coupling constant is proportional to one of the radius. Now, what people have found in 20 years ago is that so you decouple the, all the KK mode, and you have five dimensional Yangli theory. Then five dimensional Yangli theory has an instanton as a soliton. And the instanton has action A pi square or G square. And that energy is same as Kalta Klein mode energy. Which means that you thought you would remove the KK mode, but KK mode reappears as instantons. Uh, so instanton is 
uh, changing world. That's what uh, cyborg and other people have proposed. And that lends to various uh, uh, constraints on instant on dynamics. For example, when you contend the instant on, instant on state has to be representing this KK mode. And also people thought that five young theory completely represents the Tokomadero theory, but turns out this theory is not finite in six loops. So uh, five the young theory, even though it, when you include the instant on state, doesn't capture the Tokomadero theory completely. I was just wondering, when you say it's blink on the instant, what actually, what, what are the asymptotic states of the 5 d theory? Because the instant minds are space, you know, the instant right. can, can grow, keep growing in size, right? right? So well, what, do, what do the asymptotic states look like? Are there some wave packets in the instant mind space? space? Oh, do they right. keep expanding? No, no, so, right. <laughs> right, so first of all, uh, so suppose uh, let's look at the U1 case. Where you have U1 instantons, U1 amnesia, the instanton is singular point. But uh, you can introduce F5 terms, then instantons have tiny finite side, and it becomes a dipole. So, so if I have two instantons, then their modular space becomes uh, ordinarily R4 because relative <coughs> distance and identical particle is so C2 divided by D2. But when you turn on the F5 term, it becomes uh, every chance in space. But in the, let's say you take SU2 and you know. Right, no. SU2 again okay, is the same story. Suppose I have similar instant on SU2, then the wave function, relative wave function is again uh, C2 divided by C2, which is the uh, scale and the gauge of it is uh, not SU2, it's SO3, which is, uh, that's why it's C2 divided by C2. And again, you turn the F5 term, then it becomes every chance. Sorry, sorry, why do you want to turn it? Oh, so because uh, it's similar at the point, so theory is not very defined. But but, but, uh, but, but isn't that strange? Because I would expect that I, I take this five D Yamaha theory at the origin of the branch. It's supposed to be IR free, and uh, why shouldn't why uh, it not defined? Because we don't know uh, this infinite coupling limit. The theory we don't know. So. Uh, <laughs> No, in finite coupling. You're talking about two comma zero theory. Come back on. Right, so it's well defined. Right, it's well defined theory. So, but we don't know two comma zero theory exactly. But we know in low energy, when we circle convex by is captured by n equal to two perspective young theories. Right, I'm, I'm just asking. Right. In this theory, what are the asymptotic states? Right, so let me. You don't know what scattering from. Right, so let me just keep. Oh, asymptotic state? Yeah, what well, is the instant state? Uh, instant on, so let me give you the instant on quantum state first. So if I have SU2, <laughs> same instant on, then it's modular space. When I turn on the Fi terms, then it becomes every chance. And there you can find the uh, zero energy, uh, normal energy of quantum state. Right, but why, why, do you do, why do you want to turn Fi term? I mean, you no, so, you, so you can yeah. remove the uh, Fi terms, but what it tells you is that there's a one normal energy of quantum state to zero uh, what is it, this modular space? Because if I you, you say it's localized at the orbital. Orbital point, 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 right? Exactly. So if you blow up, then it has a sort of finite wavelength. But if you go to zero side limit, then it just localized. I see. So you saying, but, but the size of that will be uh, as well be set by the scale of the Yamaha coupling. Well, not the coupling, but yeah, five terms. No, but the, I mean in the actual theory, in the actual yeah, without the five terms. Right. Presuming the size is set by the Young's calculator, that's the only scale of the theory. No, instant doesn't know that scale. Uh, but uh, it's best of instant is given by Young's coupling, but. Uh, I, oh, right, so it, it has Compton wavelengths, which is uh, roughly right Young's coupling, but because it's a massive object. So there is a really special bound state. But, but you say that the normalizable. Right, it's normalizable. Right. Um, right. Right, so that implies this having a KK mode. So if you have multiple instantons, but KK mode for each momentum there should be a single quantum state besides the multiple uh, particle. And the uh, instanton dynamics has to reproduce that result. And for U1 instanton, 